What's happening, film nerds? Dave the Film Junkie here. All right. Well, I didn't do a box office video last week. I apologize. I don't exactly know why. I think I had a lot of things going on. I know my dad was in town. Yeah, you know, it happens. And uh, blah, blah, you know, this. Blah, blah, Red Sparrow didn't get too, too, too many audiences last week. And blah, blah, Black Panthers is dominated again. Anyways, um, let's talk about this weekend, and uh, if you're new to my box office video, I give you the top five domestic winners, the, you know, the top listing of the top ten, top five, and then of course I talk about the international numbers, because those are really important nowadays, because studios are looking at that big time now. Anyways, alright, so let's get started. Coming in at number uh, five in its, uh, what is it, third week, Game Night. I want to see it. Because I like Jason Bateman, I like Rachel McAdams, and I actually heard it was really it was it was a funny movie. It was a delight. It made seven point nine million dollars for the weekend, bringing that grand total, that domestic grand total, to forty five million dollars, surpassed production budget. So that's good. And uh, total, it's got sixty nine point seven million dollars all around the world. So I would say that is a success. I need to see it. Coming to number four, Red Sparrow, and it made eight point. $1 million over the weekend, bringing that domestic grand total to $31.1 million, $69 million budget. What's the international? 82.9, so that's not too bad. Looks like if it keeps, you know, it might hit $100 million worldwide, so I would say that's a somewhat success, but it's just kind of weird how people didn't flock to that one as much as you might have thought. Anyways, coming to number three, one of the newbies over the weekend, Strangers Pray at Night. It made $10.4 million over the weekend. I saw the first one. The first one was great with Liv Tyler and uh, that other guy. I forgot his name. He was a, more of a TV actor. But uh, it was great. Creepy as shit. And supposedly based on true events. And this is a sequel. But it really wasn't. I remember I had to think about it. I was like, is this a sequel or is this something totally different? But eh, it's a sequel, apparently. Yeah. So uh, it made 10.4. No production budget listed here. So. Hey, came in at number three. Well, I mean, I guess that's not bad for going up against uh, two big movies from basically one studio. Coming in at number two, A Wrinkle in Time. And it made $33.3 million over the weekend. It doesn't have a budget listed here, but I know it's over $100 million because there's that whole thing that Ava, uh, Ava Duvernay, Duvernay, I, I probably saying her name wrong, you know how I am with names. She was like the first black woman director to get over $100 million budget. So I know it was that. And uh, worldwide, $39.6 million. Yep. I wouldn't say that that's a bomb so much. I would say it underperformed big time. Yeah, because a bomb would be in like the $20 million and less range, I think. That's just in my opinion. Um, it makes you kind of wonder about certain things that uh, I'm probably going to talk about in a later video. That, you know, certain audiences, you know, I, it was actually kind of funny because there was a, a Variety or Hollywood Reporter article that kind of pitted these two to, the movies together. Like Black Panther dominated this movie. And uh, yeah, woke Twitter wasn't too happy that they pitted the two together because of um, reasons we know about. But I'm just going, well, um, that's just what happens. Uh, be happy that two movies with these with these uh, with actors of, of that caliber and the directors are one and two. Be happy about that. But of course, woke Twitter is never happy about anything. And you think they'd be supporting this movie a little bit more, but apparently not. Anyways, coming in at number one. Black Panther for the fourth week in a row. It is just an unstoppable force. $41.1 million over this weekend, bringing that domestic grand total to $562 million. And, uh, of course, it, it uh, surpassed a billion dollars worldwide. So congratulations, Coogler, Jordan, uh, Chadwick Boseman, all the cast. Good job. Good job, indeed. It actually, um, I think it's the second highest Marvel movie um, it got bumped up into the top five of altogether domestic earnings, and um, it actually surpassed The Dark Knight. So there you go, guys. It's a force to be reckoned with. So uh, yeah, um, like I said, the box office has been truly telling lately, and it's still we still got two more weeks before I kind of just make my uh, diagnosis of certain movies that have come out over the weekend. Let's talk a little bit about some of the other ones too. Uh, the Hurricane Heist came in at number eight. $3.1 million, okay? I didn't see a guy... I think I saw one goddamn commercial for that. Gringo came in 11th 
I saw commercials up the ass for this. And this just shows you about marketing. Uh, Gringo, not to mention eh, the lead, uh, $2.6 million over the weekend. Pretty interesting. I actually wanted to see Gringo. It was looking interesting. I was liking the cast, too. It was looking like a fun, funny kind of movie. I don't know. I know I use the F word. I'm sorry. God, I guess it's just when you when you critique stuff, sometimes it's just there. <laughs> Gotta get it out. <laughs> you know the reasons why I hate that that word, why it's overused with certain things. You know, you could say a movie's fun, but when it's every critic is saying that, I just ugh, it gets on my nerves. Anyways, guys, let me know your thoughts about it down below. What do you think about the box office? What did you see over the weekend? Hit that like thumbs up button if you'd be so kind. Subscribe to my channel, visitfilmjunkie.com for all my content. And, of course, visit the closet for shirts and stickers. All right, guys?